Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda. So today is the 2nd of May and it's a bank holiday here in the UK so I hope everyone's having a good time. Got a nice quiet house at the moment so I thought I would come on and record the video for May. Um, not entirely sure what's going to come through on this video as usual. Um, I do know that I'm going to be working with certain frequencies and colours and a particular guide though. So that's a good start and I'll tell you what that is and then we will get into it. So I'm going to be tuning into the Lemurian energies in this video and I have the Lemurian Star Child Oracle deck by uh, Leanne Carpenter and Michael Croom. I'm going to be pulling cards from this. It's actually got 88 cards in it. It's a really big deck. Um, and it also comes with um, a good book as well, uh, a good sized book. Not all decks do, do they? But this is a, this is quite a good book. How many pages? It's got 336 pages. So, you know, it's a, it's a big body of work. And uh, they actually sent it to me a few months ago and haven't used it yet uh, on, online as it were. I've used it myself but I was waiting for the right moment. Um, has to be said as well that if you're interested in getting it, they very kindly gave me an affiliate link. So if you buy it via the link below in my description box, it just gives me a little bit back for, I don't know, a coffee and a cake or something. Maybe I shouldn't say that. A juice and uh, whatever, <laughs> something healthy. But uh, it was very sweet of them to offer me that and I appreciate it. Energy exchange is very important. And I want to honour um, the fact that they did that. So I'm going to be using this deck. We're also going to be working with the energy of Sanat Kumara. So Sanat Kumara um, overlighted and was a beautiful guide and teacher in the times of Lemuria. So we're going to be linking into Sanat Kumara. We're going to be linking into the energies of fluorite, the crystal fluorite, uh, Lemurian seed quartz, and I think also the crown chakra and the soul star chakra are also somehow involved in all of this. So shall we get going? Um, I'm going to just shuffle the cards as I talk to you. Yeah, you can see I've got a bit of a, a green vibe going on today as well, because I mean, that's the fluorite, I suppose, isn't it? It's almost like <laughs> I just can't get enough of fluorite. I know I've showed you this beautiful crystal before, but it's just this is the energy at the moment that I feel is so healing for all of us because fluorite helps to calm us and soothe us. And I think the world at the moment needs to be soothed. You know, it feels as though the world needs to be soothed mankind needs to be soothed, be, to be told it's going to be okay, okay? Also that we have the skills, we have the talents, we have the gifts within ourselves to get ourselves out of any mess that man might have created or woman might have created, okay? Um, and I think we can learn a lot by going back to the ancient civilizations, whether it's Lemuria, Atlantis, ancient Egypt, go back to the peak, the pinnacle of what they knew, of what they embodied, um, of the energy that was available um, to help us through this difficult time that we're all in collectively and also personally. I know a lot of people at the moment feeling very overwhelmed, very stressed, very anxious, not really sure of the next steps. So I thought it'd be helpful this May to go back into the Lemurian energies and just see what it is that we can re-remember. And I want to say re-remember because most of us have had lifetimes there. Um, most of us are also linked to people that we had lifetimes with there. We may not realise it, but we, we, we are. Um, yeah, you see the card of Cosmic Circles has just come out. I'll talk about this in a moment, but the cards are very beautiful. They all have this sort of subdued um, palette on them as well. If I just show you sort of the colour palette that we've got going on here. Very beautiful, aren't they? Very soothing. You see what I mean? It's like they're soothing colours. Um, soothing crystal frequencies. Soothing waters of Lemuria. The... Um, the memory of Lemuria is existing within the waters of your body. Um, 
and equally the, the waters within your body can be reprogrammed to remember your Lemurian lifetime. Um, not in terms of ego, you know, in that, oh, I was a, I was a high priestess in whatever. Um, personally, interesting, but how relevant is that really to today? It's far more to do with remembering the Lemurian wisdom and the ability to heal, to be able to transcend, to be able to transmute, to be able to um, build bridges, etc. with each other, okay? So yes, the water within our body carries that memory. And for me, as an example, using this deck, um, when I shuffle a deck such as this, which is devoted, for example, to a particular age, in this case Lemuria, let me just do it live on camera. What I'm doing is I'm shuffling the deck, but I'm asking for that part of me that remembers my Lemurian lifetime, remembers my abilities, my light, to enter into this deck and to speak through it. So linking back into the Lemurian age, the heritage that I have within me, linking into that lifetime, please let this deck now speak and bring forth the messages that are needed for all those that are watching. So let's just pull one card out as I do that. Resolution. How, okay, I'll I just need to read what's on the card and then I'll show you it. It says, resolution, old timelines collapsing, insights, higher self, embodiment and expression. Old timelines collapsing, insights, higher self embodiment and expression. Okay, so I'll just show you the card and then I need to look back at it so I can, I can channel what wants to come through from it. But straight away we've got like a light code there in terms of this symbol, that's what it looks like to me anyway. You see, this is the thing in, um, I've been saying this for a while, it's as though we're all tripping up on words. All of us are increasingly getting triggered by words. Um, and we are also falling into traps with words. We are being, um, I'm being shown a, uh, I don't know what to call it. Um, I'm hearing the words a spell master. It's as though there are people that we are listening to, we are absorbing the information from, who are masters of being able to manipulate and twist words to be anything that they wish it to be. So it's as though the word has almost become corrupt in certain circles. The beauty of language is becoming corrupted. I've got a few Heart Squad energies here that are just hovering. One straight away I see is Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman, for those of you that don't know, an English actor, uh, when I channeled him, it was all about the voice. It was all about the quality of the voice. It was all about words being rich and beautiful and empowering and the power of stories, storytelling. He's reminding me now, I remember what we were talking about. We talked about the power of storytelling, um, but it's as though the stories being told now are long, long tales of woe, Alan is saying. Um, or they are fables, they are, um, they are make-believe. People are casting spells with their words and they are trapping people with them because people are wanting to believe what they are hearing because they are linked in sometimes to an old timeline which, is cl which will collapse or it's because they're linking into it because of their own ego and their own tunnel visioned way of looking at the world. So there's a real warning coming through here because this is interesting with the whole Lemuria thing and Atlantis in particular. We have like the golden age of these times where as I say, we were at the peak, the pinnacle, everything was good. And then it all started to become corrupted and the civilizations fell. And one of the reasons they fell is that there were people there who were dabbling in the who were dabbling in the dark arts who were misleading and manipulating people and the people became spellbound by what they were being told 
and the lies that they were being fed. And nobody could understand the truth anymore because the words were corrupted. So what we've got here is the energy of symbols and light language coming through and going to be needed more and more to be able to actually convey what it is that needs to be said. Having said that, uh, language is never going to cease because I'm being reminded of the words from the Bible, which is uh, <laughs> what the words are now. It's something about the word became the word became flesh or it's like God gave us the word. God gave us speech, basically. So it's not going to ever be taken away, but it needs to be it needs to be cleansed. We need to go through this cleansing of communication and it's, again, it's very easy to point the finger and say, oh, well, yes, that person's misleading this group or that piece of advice there is wrong or this particular media outlet don't promote the truth, but this one does. Um, but ultimately, that that could be interesting, but that's not what you're asked to do. What you're asked to do is do the inner cleansing with regard to your own communication and your own voice, okay, all of us. Um, oh, something else here. Okay, it's quite interesting for me personally because as I'm linking into this message it wants to come through, I'm seeing like a lineup of people that I've been channeling over the last two years and all of their messages are coming back to me linked into what I'm trying to communicate now because I've also now got the energy of Prince. Prince was talking about this in my Heart Squad channelings as well, about the power of symbols. I mean, he gave himself a symbol as his, uh, uh, with, uh, with regard to his name. I know he did that for reasons other than what I'm talking about here. But look out for symbols. So I'm being told that when you get confused as to what is true, what is not, um, look look for symbols in nature. Um, you see, I'm being told even symbols are being corrupted. You see, because this is the thing. I mean, with regard to, for example, the elite, you know, um, I won't say various words because then the, I get into trouble with this channel, but the, what, the word beginning with I and ending in I, okay? <laughs> that section of the elite, um, there are symbols that they've taken and uh, have twisted and corrupted to mean something different now. Um, one would be the butterfly, okay? So you could look at the butterfly and you could see it as I do, as the most beautiful expression of an, of an animal that is to do with metamorphosis from one state of being to another. It's linked into transformation. If I wear a butterfly necklace, it's about that. It's just about, it's not about anything else. But somebody else will see that symbol and take it to mean something dark, and so even that symbol has, be, has become corrupted to a degree for some people. So it's as though we've got to get right back to, um, we've got to start again in terms of the way that we see the world, the way that we hear the world, the way that we experience the world. It's as though there is this cleansing light energy that needs to come in to reveal actually the world anew through our five senses. Um, it's like we need to be rebirthed. The old timeline collapsing is about the way that we did look at the world, the way that we did used to, what we used to listen to how we were programmed, what we expected, how we felt about the world. You see, the thing is, guys, until this thing about old timelines collapsing, what's coming through to me is that this is linked into until we can let go of our view that the, the world is going to, you know, rack and ruin and you know, how much terrible stuff there is out there, which I know there is, but it's as though what we think becomes our reality. So the more that we're focusing in on 
just the horrendous, never-ending suffering and evil and darkness, we are reinforcing that. And the timeline on this planet has been one of suffering, has been one of war, has been one of horror. So to replace it with the golden age, what is within our mind and what we are expecting to see, hear and feel out there needs to collapse within so that when we open our eyes in the morning, we actually expect to see beauty. We actually expect to hear a story of bravery or courage. You know, I this morning, I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I was just w watching something on TV and it, there's a, a, a young guy in the UK who um, it was a lady, basically. She'd, she'd fallen into the River Thames in London from one of the bridges and she called out for help. It was only a few days ago. He jumped in to try and save her and sadly he died. But there's this campaign to try and, you know, um, honour him, honour his memory officially. Um, even though that's a very sad story, it also is a very inspiring story that it was midnight when he jumped into that river. It was dark, couldn't see anything. He, he didn't care. It's just like it kicked in the human instinct to be there for your brother and sister, the one that you don't even know. Um, you know, things like that raise the vibration actually because it reminds us that human beings can be amazing extraordinary you know um okay let's just put a few other cards so yeah this old timeline collapsing it's as though we keep expecting to see it out there you know we're looking for proof and confirmation of it collapsing out there that this has to happen or that has to happen or that person has to exit the world stage no, none of that can happen until you have let go of the old timeline that exists that is existing within you. The old world and the old paradigm actually exists within you because you've been part of it. You've actually been its architect, Metatron is saying. You've been its architect. What does he mean by that? It means that you have shaped some of the bricks and mortar over many lifetimes, the, all the different roles that you've played. OK, you've been the architect of the old world. And so to dismantle it brick by brick, it's, the, it's an inner journey. But it starts with cutting the cord to that old timeline and manifesting in the new one, stepping into your ability to be a master manifester. That's what you were able to do in previous lifetimes. It's as though we've forgotten our own power. We've forgotten the... Um, extraordinary ability of light to be able to heal, to be able to transmute, to be able to carve a path where there is none, etc. Where does that light reside? That light resides within you. And straight away, I can hear lots of you going straight up into your mind in terms of, yeah, but how do I do it? How do I do that? This new circle that we are entering into, the card of cosmic circles, this new cycle rather would be a better way, the, the new cycle that we're entering into is to do with unlimited possibilities. You already know it. You already know all this stuff. It's all within you. You've lived the lifetimes. That's why we are inviting back the aspect of you that lived in Lemuria that knew how to do this stuff. Not in terms of, right, okay, now I'm gonna go and write a course and you know do X, Y, Z on that. No, to live it, to be it, to feel it, to integrate it within yourself, to recognize it within yourself, that I am that, that I am that light, that I am that hope, that I am that change, that I am that healing, that I am that love, that I have these qualities, that whatever is going on out there, the journey is within me. And by me changing me and becoming more at peace with me, I change that. Um, this card of Cosmic Circles says create sacred space and embrace. It's to do with creating the sacred space within yourself. 
creating time and recognition for that part of you that has lived many, many times, experienced more than you can ever imagine. We become blinkered when we come into this world. We only remember a tiny hundredth, not even a hundredth, a thousandth of what we know. So this may, and it does feel via the light codes that are coming in, what's going on with the sun, the solar flares, what's going on with the Schumann resonance, the earth pulses, we are being um, prompted to remember. Let's pull three more cards from this deck. Let's see what we get. So energies for May, please. Right, we've three have just literally flown out of the deck. We'll just like to say that on the bottom of the deck, it's too good not to show you, we've got the Dove of Peace. Okay, so the Dove of Peace. Um, it says, stay in the heart, all is well, be at peace. What a beautiful card that is. Can you see that? I think my camera focuses better when I put my finger on the cards, but anyway, who knows? Dove of peace, stay in the heart, all is well, be at peace. Stay in the heart. <laughs> Are we getting the message now? Our mind is getting us into all sorts of problems out there in the collective at the moment, you know, but um, the heart will never lie. Okay, the well, I've got four cards here. Okay, let's start with number one. It says, know yourself. It says, meditate, who am I? The veil is lifting, opening. Okay, it's quite a nice summation of what I've been talking about, that the answers are within, that you need to slow down. It's as though we're living in a culture which is clamouring for information, clamouring for knowledge, clamouring for the next instalment, but it's always out there, you know? It's like, tell me, tell me. Um, well, yes, that that that's part of community, to be able to... Uh, talk and communicate and share our experiences but it has to be balanced with the inner work that we should be doing at this time which is about turning off the technology you know um, what is it that you feel what is it that you think about any situation in your personal life or collective I was really disappointed to see somebody I've admired for a long time uh, a long time I won't name them, but um, last night um, on a social media channel and they, I don't know what is going on with them, but they were just, well, they'd lost the plot, basically. They were just so in separation consciousness and telling people what to believe and slamming anybody that has a different opinion. And you can probably guess what the subject matter was. Um, it was really, really sad to see because this person is such a bright shining star and has so much wisdom. But for some reason, they are operating at the level of the outer, you know, in terms of I have to tell everybody else what my opinion is because it's only my opinion that matters. And my opinion is the truth. And if you can't see that truth, you are a sheep. You know, you're an idiot. And it almost hurt my soul to see this person doing it because it's like, you're so much better than that. You're so much better than that. Please come back to centre, come back to your heart. But again, I can't do that because that's, it's their path. And, who, you know, who knows at the end of the day? It's, it would be egotistical of me to say that they're wrong. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying I was observing it and my heart was hurting because it just felt so alien to the perspective that I may have, for example. And so how do you bridge that? There was no bridge. That's what I'm trying to say. There was no bridge back. It was like the bridge was broken. So this thing about knowing yourself, it doesn't matter what that person says. It doesn't matter what I say. It's about what you say. It's about what you think. And when we are truly sovereign, this whole thing about sovereignty being the new buzzword at the moment, you know, when you're sovereign, when you're sovereign, when you're truly sovereign, you don't need to be going out and converting everybody or, you know, slamming everybody else that has a different opinion to you. You know yourself. And look at that. She knows herself. She's at peace with 
her opinion on things, her decisions that she's making, who she is, what she's doing with her life. She has the balance of seeking external help when she needs it and support and hearing other people's opinions, sure. But equally, she's very comfortable with what she knows and what she knows might be different from the next person. Um, and it comes via meditation. Who am I? And also the promise here, which is the veil is lifting. The veil is lifting, i.e. communication with spirit. Well, I was going to say it's becoming easier. I mean, I don't think it's ever easy. I mean, I don't find it easy a lot of the time. Often I will try and meditate and I'll get absolutely nothing. And I always remember during those times that it's not about um, having to hear something. It's not about getting the answer a lot of the time. Meditation is often just linked into, it was to do with being. It's just to do with breath. It's to do with being. It's to, be, it's to do with being present with yourself, being in that moment. The universe has these moments which are just, which have space and have nothingness and silence. I went down to the beach yesterday. It was about, I was probably down there at about 10 o'clock in the morning Admittedly, it was a nice sunny day, um, but the thing I could not get over was it was so quiet. It was a, it was a, it, the sea was quiet, but everybody on that beach wasn't busy. But even the kids, they were playing really, really quietly. The grown ups were saying nothing. There were fishermen there standing saying nothing. There were people paddle boarding on this sea that was just totally tranquil. You know, you couldn't hear anything coming from them. It was just, it was a moment. I just really took it into my heart. And it felt as though Mother Earth was just having a moment of pause, of silence, of deep meditation. And because she was, all of the people were on her at that moment were just absolutely in synchronicity with it. It wasn't about going out there and getting the answer and having to tell you what I then got and, you know, don't you realise this, don't you know? It was just that amazing pause, that stillness. That's meditation. That's what it's all about. Okay, next card out is the Sacred Mountain, um, which talks about vision quest, clarity and truth, deep healing. Okay. So if you just look at that colour palette as well. You see we've definitely got a theme going on with these colours for May. Very soft, pastel pastelline colours, is that such a th word? But that explosion of yellow light at the end. You see, to me, this is just like the sun, solar flares coming off big time at the moment. Um, there's a channel on YouTube called Wages World. Not Wayne's World. <laughs> Wages World great guy in America somewhere. I don't know. He never shows his face. I don't know what he looks like, but he's got, he's got a nice voice, nice American soft voice. And um, he's very knowledgeable about um, what's going on with the solar flares and, um, you know, other stuff like that. I'm sure he does more than, oh, earthquakes. He's good on, he's hot on earthquakes, solar flares. Don't know whether he talks about Schumann resonance or not. He probably does. But um, he would be a good guy to check out because he's always very accurate and up to date. But I know because he's, he said in the last couple of days that, that we've had these massive solar flares that are just pulsing big time into the planet. And they are lighting the way for us. They're lighting the way. So again, the, the codes are coming from nature. Okay. Um, next card. <laughs> I can't make this up. I was just saying nature's going to show the way. Look at this one. Okay, I hadn't read this. I'll show you the card. And then it says, attune to nature's signs to find your way. Follow your heart. Ellen of the ways. Well, she looks very Lemurian, doesn't she? <laughs> okay, so... Those of us that are wise at this time increasingly are attuning to the natural rhythms of the world, nature, her cycles, what she's doing. Today we've got 65 mile per hour winds coming in. And um, so what's that all about? Well, that is to do with nature saying that today is a good day to have a good clear out, okay? To clear away, whether it's mental thought forms, whether it's stuff in the wardrobe, 
I don't know, whatever, it's clearing the air with somebody, you know, if you've had a falling out, that type of thing, okay? Um, if it's raining, what's that all about? Which we've got pouring rain coming in the afternoon. Well, that's to do with cleansing, okay? Letting go. It's taking your cues from Mother Nature um, and working with her. We've, we've been working against her for so many years as a species, so many decades, so many centuries, we've been working against her. It's time to work with her. So in a time where man and his words, often spiteful, often hasty, often misguided, often untrue, often egotistical, okay, often manipulative, I'm sorry, but it's true. This, you know, what Alan was talking about in terms of the spell master, well, where is the who? Where's the educator? Where is the teacher? It's it's coming from places like Mother a Mother Nature, okay, to to lead the way. Um, the animals too. Oh, my nose is going crazy, which it always did does when I'm uh, onto something here. The animals leading the way as well, you know, and um, teaching us rather than us always thinking we're the top dog, you know, excuse the pun, but, you know, we're the top of the food chain and we dictate everything. It's as though Mother Nature is going to be coming in and saying, actually, mankind, I love you, but it's time for you to learn and uh, uh, do life in a different way. Um, the next card that follows it is creation, unique expression, flow of creation and joyfulness. So I want to put these two cards together because they've both got this beautiful yellow golden light, the sunlight coming in, um, lighting the path ahead. So co-creating with Mother Nature, but equally taking it now into the personal, um, sinking into our own creative powers and our unique expression. Just want to feel into this card because I feel there's another message there but I'm not quite getting it so I'm going to tune into the lavender soul star spray because it just feels as though it fits quite nicely can you see color tones are ringing quite nicely for me with that let's just see what wants to come through here balance again balance you see look at these car colors yellow gold and purple violet are complementary colors um this is third eye as well third eye pineal gland a lot of activation coming in around the third eye huge expansion of the third eye Huge expansion of our intuitive abilities, our clairvoyant abilities, our clairsentient abilities. But again, I'm wanting to say it needs to come in in a different way. Um, I, I noticed myself recently, I, I, I've had this thing about, you know, trying to get myself a bit fitter and walking every day. And I've been doing it pretty religiously, actually, since December. I haven't been as good recently. I've had a few days off, but I've been pretty good. Um, but I've noticed that I was sort of walking just sort of as another job to get done, you know, listening to music, wasn't really playing, paying any attention to what was going on within my own brain, mind, intuition, heart, um, almost like zoning out. It's like I'm walking, but I'm not. And yesterday I thought, right, this has got to stop. You know, you need to walk with intention. You need to walk and actually look and listen to the signs that nature is trying to give you. You know, so it's like, and again, I do it, but you see it everywhere. Everyone's walking around with these air, what are they called? AirPods, is it? <laughs> I always get it wrong. My kids find it hilarious. I think they are called AirPods. Anyway, I, I call them speakers. Anyway, whatever they are. Um, you are disconnected from Mother Earth when you're doing that. You're disconnected from your fellow man when you're doing that take them out, start to listen to the bird song, start to, you know, see the colours that are around you, truly start to feel the sun on your face, truly start to feel the earth underneath your feet. Ask for the signs, you'll get the signs, but there, it's as though the third eye powering up, it's going to be coming in, in it's going to be coming in, in different ways, you're going to get the signs in different ways. 
And I don't know what that is because it's going to be very unique to you. But I always say to spirit, I mean, I'm a, bit of, I'm a bit stubborn. So I'll often say, OK, if I get a sign, it's like, is that really a sign there? <laughs> then I'll say, OK, give it to me again. <laughs> and then usually they will give it to me again. And then sometimes I say, can I have it again? I mean, I, you shouldn't really do this. It's not really good practice. But, you know, they do say, don't they, if you get something three times. I'll give you a good example. This is a live ongoing example, which I quite appreciate your uh feelings on so i've been not just on my own there's some very good unity teachers out there the likes of matt khan for example lee harris k patcher various others but um you know it has felt quite lonely to try and just keep on this path of unity consciousness particularly over the last couple of years because everybody just wants to go into separate camps they don't want anybody or it feels sometimes as though they don't want to be unified. You know, it's like, I don't want to see the higher perspective. I just want to keep, you know, when kids were kid, when we were kids and you'd throw mud pies at each other, I just want to keep throwing the mud pies, thank you. You know, I don't want to listen to the grown up in the room who's actually saying, put the mud pies down, you know, give each other a hug and see the common ground with each other. It's like, no, I don't want to do that, thanks. Anyway, the point is, I've been thinking about, I have been thinking, how do I carry on with this? What? How do I, what's the strategy? What the hell is the strategy? Because it's as though, thank you for listening, but a lot of people don't want to listen. They want to listen to the extreme stuff. They want to listen to the separatist stuff. That's why, people, that's why a lot of people are doing it as well. Not everybody, but it's because it's popular. So I'm like, well, what do I do? I'm not going to join that. I'm not going to join that energy, but what do I do? So um, I had this idea, which I've mooted before, about a unity panel, getting a unity panel together, people that just are teachers that want to talk about, you know, bringing us back together, finding the common ground, you know, it's fine if you have differences, that you don't agree with me on this, you see life very differently, but actually we love each other, we can see the divine in each other, we are going to get on, despite the differences. I thought that's the route I was going. And then over the last couple of days from nowhere, I've had about seven invitations and a few of them are from, they're to join pl platforms where all the people I would regard as being quite separatist are. And I'm thinking, right, what is this then? This is Metatron. Well, what Metatron said to me is he said, don't get triggered when I say this. He said, it's time to go into enemy territory. Now, he does not mean that they are the enemy because there's no such thing as enemy, okay? We are all just, we are all one. We've all just got different opinions. He was giving the analogy of like a battlefield. It's like, you're here, they're there, you know, uh, they're not going to come and join you. You know, they're, they're not listening to you. So why don't you go over there and start talking in that camp, as it were? And I'm like, really? Do you really want me to do that? I really don't know if I want to do that. You know, I don't know if I even want to be associated with some of these names. But um, it's just an example, basically, of trying something new, I suppose. I can't even remember why I'm talking about this now. <laughs> anyway, it must have been a reason. Maybe just to get some feedback. Let's put another couple of cards. You know me, I do go off on my meandering sometimes, but it's just the way I am. Nothing like a good meander. In fact, it's often on the meander that you find the thing that's really important, isn't it? It's like I'm having a walk. It's like I'll just go down this little path here and it's actually going to lead to something that I'd never thought was even possible or meet somebody I never thought I would meet or see something I never thought I'd see. One more card from this deck, and I'm going to move on to another deck. Breathing, yeah, breathing, thank you. Breathing is the be all and end all, guys. We've all got to do it, so we might as well do it consciously. Ground, feel, purity, clarity, expression, sensation as the wind whistles through the window. Wind, gales, breath, body. What's the world been fighting over? What, what is the world fighting over at the moment? Oxygen. You know, look at what's going on in India. Oxygen. They're fighting over oxygen. What have we been fighting over 
We've been fighting over air. We've been fighting over what is air. Air is freedom. Are we free? Are we not? You're always free within yourself. That is the truth. Whatever is going on around you, you can be free. You can be free. It's an, freedom is an inner state. It's an inner way of being. You can choose to feel imprisoned and trapped, or you can choose to feel free and that you can breathe. It's a choice in every single moment. But yeah, breathing. Um, oh, there's a song coming to me. Oh, it's Kate Bush. Oh, I love Kate Bush. What's that song she does? Oh, it's Breathing. She's got a song called Breathing. Fantastic song. Do you know the one? And it's like, in, out, in, out, in, out. Let me see if I can just get the words up quickly. Now, she would be somebody I would love to see when concerts come back, which they will at some point. Although she doesn't tour very much, does she? Oh, yeah. I've been talking about the outer and the inner, haven't I? The outside world and the inner world. And it says, these are the lyrics to breathing. Outside gets inside through her skin. I've been out before, but this time it's much safer in. Last night in the sky, such a bright light. My radar send me danger, but my, but my instincts tell me to keep breathing. Breathing my mother in, breathing my beloved in. Breathing, breathing. It's quite funny, there's a thing here, it says breathing her nicotine, breathing. I was actually watching a video by David Lynch yesterday on meditation. He's being interviewed about meditation. And um, it's so funny, the interviewer says to him, you know, okay, David, um, you know, what, what is, I don't know, what is your practice? What is your practice? You know, what can you share with us about meditation and how you do it? And he sort of says, he says, well, what I do is I, I get up and he says, I have a couple of coffees and a couple of fags and, um, and then I do my meditation. <laughs> And I just thought, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not saying it's right. I just think I just made me laugh because it's this whole, you know, thing about the spiritual path. It has to be so po-faced, you know, and it's like I'm doing this and I'm eating everything right. And most of us have got some vices. Let's be honest. Most of us have got some vices. And when, you know, we all know what we should be doing. But um, it made me laugh because he's obviously, he's very, he, and he'd be, he'd been practicing meditation for years. And he looks pretty good, actually. So... He's doing something right. Um, anyway, Kate Bush, I might listen to that in a moment. Right, let me see, I've got, I wanted to bring this deck in, the Self Love Oracle by Janet Chui. You see, same palette, we're on here. Let's see what guidance. What is going to serve us best in May? Share light, okay, that one, right, yes, that's a one more. Funny, it's got a butterfly on the card, but let's just go with this. Share light, share both your trials and your triumphs. Our stories benefit others twice when we share them and when we live as examples of transformation. That, uh, uh, okay, this is all tied into what I've been talking about. Share both your trials and triumphs. Our stories benefit others twice when we share them and when we live as examples of transformation, the butterfly. Okay, so we've got the symbol of the butterfly there. Let's claim that back as something beautiful, not something tainted and tawdry. Um, it's also talking about storytelling again. Do you know what I think is happening at the moment? in our collective, certainly on social media. Although I can see it creeping into everyday life as well out there. It's as though a lot of us are feeling as though we're being silenced because I can't say that. It's not acceptable to say that anymore. Um, did you see the most ludicrous latest thing in terms of wokeism? I was reading that was, I don't know whether it's Disneyland. It could be Disneyland. There's, um, some, whether it's a ride or it's just a statue, I think it might be a part of a ride. It's basically got Sleeping Beauty and, you know, the prince is kissing Sleeping Beauty. And 
we all know that story and it's beautiful, it's magical, it's like fairy tale, it's like who doesn't want to be Sleeping Beauty and the prince comes and kisses her and makes it all all right. Everybody wants that for God's sake. Anyway, in our new culture that we are now in, the spell master who's coming in and corrupting everything, it's like, oh no, that is not acceptable because Sleeping Beauty is asleep. You know, he is violating her by kissing her while she is asleep. I read it and I just thought, get me off planet Earth, please. Get me off this mad planet. This is, this is madness. This is madness. Because the person that's seen that in the story, they're the one with the corrupted mind. They're the one with the perverted mind. Nobody else had even thought that before you put that idea and that seed in there. And now you've ruined that whole thing. You know, spellmaster. Let me put some of my poisonous little dust over that little bit of beauty and magic and let me taint it. You can't have that. That's not acceptable. You know, so the stories, let's go back again, Alan Rickman. I might put the Alan Rickman link below because it feels like it's probably worth a rewatch, his channeling that I did with him. Um, he talked about the importance of storytelling there's a beautiful, beautiful quote by Alan Rickman, uh, not from my channeling, something he actually said when he was alive. Let me just read it to you. You'll know it. OK, this is Alan's words. And it's a human need to be told stories. The more <laughs> He was quite forthright, Alan, OK? The more we're governed by idiots and have no control over our destinies, the more we need to tell stories to each other about who we are, why we are, where we come from, and what might be possible. Oh my goodness, Alan, you're just sort of summing up my whole video here. <laughs> where we come from, Lemuria, Atlantis, ancient Egypt, we've got magic within us. We are more than all of this nonsense that's going on in the world at the moment, that wants to taint everything that wants to bring us down to this lowest common denominator. We've got to rise above it. We've got to rise above it. Um, but, to remember to, but remember, to rise above it means we have to collapse that old timeline within us. And equally, it's okay to say no to anything else that, that they are trying to put onto us, but realize that it's about us saying no within ourselves, standing up, being sovereign. OK, yeah, that word again, but it's true. That is what we need to be doing. OK, so share our light. Store This feels like stories being passed down. That reminds me of that scene from Mamma Mia, which I cry at every single time, slipping through my fingers. The mother who's t brushing her daughter's hair. Oh, my God, it's just that's just that gets me every time. It's like time going so quickly, slipping through my fingers. So as time is slipping through my fingers, my child, I need to pass on this story of my life, of your grandmother's life, of our traditions, of what is good, of what is honest, of what is true. This beautiful story that I used to tell my child, I'm going to tell your grandchild, I'm going to tell your child. Your child will then tell its child. It's as though it, it lives on. Um, it lives on through the blood and water lines. We have to be the purvey we have to be the purveyors and the gatekeepers of what is good and sacred and magical in our world. The stories can't die with us. Dance on the bottom of the deck. Dance. At a time when mo many people feel as though it's the last thing I want to do. I don't feel joyful. I don't feel like dancing. I'm in the mood for dancing, romancing. Da, 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 da. UK people, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody else, you're probably looking at me thinking she's lost it. I'm in the mood for dancing. Oh, I love that song. The Nolans. Yes, terribly unhip. But um, it says change is not possible without movement. And movement is everywhere in the universe. You are invited to join in the dance, the dance of the universe. Let's bring in Sanat Kumara at this point. <sighs> Let 
<laughs> he's saying, he's showing me light codes and he's saying if you could just see the way that light codes dance in the air, okay, they're not static. Okay, so when you see like a light code, we're looking at it there and it's static. They're not static. They are moving, they are dancing, they are wanting to, if you could see them in your aura, some of you may be able to do this, but what they effectively do is they move, they flow. Um, they're not like rigid. It's like, okay, here I've got whatever, you know, um, think about the platonic solids. Here I've got the hexahedron. Here I've got, I don't know, an octahedron. Here I've got this particular light code linked into Atlantis. Here I've got that light code. And it's like, they don't ever move. You know, it's not like a jigsaw. It's like, it's like they move, they're fluid. Um, they're encouraging you to move and be fluid. We need to be integrating these light codes into our organs, is what I'm hearing, into our lungs, into our hearts, into our throats. This is funny. I'm hearing into our bowels. <laughs> no, but if you think about that, guys, come on, into the bowel. What The bowel is where we get rid of waste product from the body. What is the thing that's holding you back? Is What's holding us back as a species is we're not letting go of all of the crap, you know? Literally and symbolically. We can't let go of the ego. We can't let go of, you know, I am right, you are wrong. We can't let go of all the shadow aspects. We need to learn to dance. We need to learn to dance. It's as though the whole world has become very constipated, you know? And I'm talking that in terms of the wider, much bigger analogy. Constipated in terms of not being able to have a laugh. Constipated in terms of not being able to say this in case I, you know, trigger you. Do you know the thing that will never trigger people? Well, actually it can trigger people, but it's still, it's almost like worth triggering. <laughs> love. I'm being serious. Love. You know, if you can just hold on to the energy of love and lightness and joy... You might trigger somebody, but it's not going to be a negative trigger because what you'd be basically doing is you're reminding somebody that life can be this good. Life can be light. Life can be joyous. And so if you're in a very, you know, for whatever reason, um, low vibrational state, that can, trigger's not even the right word, it can be the catalyst is what I'm trying to say. It can be the catalyst to remind you that actually life doesn't have to be that way. Even if you're going through a difficult time, the sun can come back out again. You know, hang on to the dance, hang on to the joy. How are we doing? 52 minutes. Um, Samak Kamara, Lemuria. What do you want to say? He's showing me a um, a classical Lemurian face, um, which is very, I want to say, elfin-like. Well, I suppose it's like this person here, but I mean, that's what I'm, I'm seeing it now in my mind's eye as well. A very elfin-like face, um, big eyes, big eyes, almond-shaped eyes, fine hair, fine hair on the head, but equally fine hair on the body. There was something very um, delicate and refined about these peoples. Now, remember, these peoples are also within you. You have the Lemurian aspect within you. To do, uh, it's to do with delicacy, uh, light frequencies. Because they operated at such a high vibrational energy and were so full of light, um, they were light in terms of weight. Um, they were light in terms of energy. They were light-hearted. They were light on their feet. They were light of spirit. Get the impression that a lot of us at that time could levitate as well. I'm feeling as though it's like my feet want to lift off the ground. Um, levitation, um, transportation, transportation of things. Think about something like 
I know Stonehenge, Stonehenge doesn't link back to the Lemurian age, but I'm being shown something like Stonehenge, the history of that, whereby how did those rocks get there? It's like, how the hell did that happen? Well, you know, transportation, energetic transportation, you know, that's how it happened. Um, so think about the symbolism of that. If you were, and you were, if you're watching this, around during the Lemurian age, you had the ability to be able to uh, transport something solid from there to there, okay? Now, the rational mind can't understand that because it's like, well, how does this piece of smoky quartz in my hand get from here to over there without me throwing it, you know? Um, but you do actually have the ability to be able to do that. The question is, do you want to learn how to do it? And I'm being serious when I say that because it's, it's not just sort of like, okay, well, this is the answer, page 96 of the book. This would be something which is to do with self-mastery. If you really wanted to do this in this lifetime, to learn how to do that, you you can do it. But it's 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 like a life, when I say it's a lifetime's work, I'm being shown somebody like Uri, Gil, Uri, Geller, Uri Geller, you know, who's able to bend spoons and all the rest of it. I mean, that's his party piece stuff that he does. He can do a lot more than that without getting into the, the rights and the wrongs of Yuri Geller and whether you like him, you don't like him. But, you know, he he has, in fact, he's very Lemurian. The more I think about his energy and the way he looks, he's got that very slight body. Um, he, ha he, he knows, he has the ability to be able to do that. Um, he's commercialised it to a degree. Um, to be, he, and he did that with intention, is what I'm being told, certainly, certainly subconsciously with intention. Um, because then he was able to get out into the 21st century ideology that, oh, you can actually bend a spoon if you do this. Um, you can do X, Y, Z, all the things he's shown over the years. But he actually is, um, he's got a very, in he's got a very interesting energy, Yuri, Gal Yuri Gala. He's dabbled with both sides as well as we both have. I have as well in previous lifetimes and you prob you will have done as well. We have to own that, you see. We have to own that, that we have dabbled in both the dark arts and the light arts, whatever you want to call it. Anybody that's had a, you know, previous lifetime in any of these big civilizations, there will have been a time in one of them where you definitely were either became corrupted or... Um, were linked into some darker energies because you got um, caught up in the tidal wave of manipulation. Now, in this lifetime, I think, I can only speak from my own perspective, but one of the reasons I'm so adamant that I'm going to just stay on the unity path, and this is the whole thing about do I go into the enemy territory and go into that whole, do I want to be associated with people that are just spewing separation stuff? It's because I know I've done that before. I know I've done that before in other lifetimes. So it's almost like I don't really want to have to dust off that old cloak and put put do that. Um, well, I wouldn't be doing it, but, you know, I'd still be associated with it. So own the fact that you've been both. Uh, Yuri has definitely been both. And um, it's quite interesting. I think I might have been a student of his in a previous life. Anyway, this is all not relevant to most people, but let's just see any other message that's coming through. Just linking into my Lemurian seed quartz now, Crystal. For May, let's get back to May. I'm being shown the Maypole, you know. I don't know if this is something that happens in all countries, it certainly happens in my country. Dancing around the Maypole with the um, coloured strands is something that's very powerful to meditate on, I'm being told. Because if you think about the symbolism of the maypole, do you all know what I mean? Let me just get a picture of it up. And the coloured strands. The coloured strands are actually representations of colour energies. I remember as a young child seeing somebody doing a maypole dance at, I don't know, a church fair or something like that. And I remember being completely and utterly captivated by it. OK, I like colours, you know that. Colour is my thing. But it was more than that. 
I'm being told it's almost a representation. The maypole is a representation of, again, what we all did in previous lifetimes, such as Lemuria, which is that we were all much more conscious that we were holding on to a particular coloured ray, okay? A coloured ray. So um, it's true in this lifetime as well. We all come in on different coloured rays. So I know I come in on the blue ray. Um, uh, but and I might have associations with other rays as well, but it's mainly the blue ray with me. You might be, I don't know, the yellow ray, the, the red ray, the green ray, whatever. Um, we all need to work together, you see, to, you know, I know it sounds corny, but to make the rainbow. What is the rainbow? The rainbow is God's promise. What is God's promise? God's promise is heaven on earth. Okay, so again, if we're all just going into our separate camps the whole time, and it's like, I'm only going to associate with people who are on the blue ray and who see life my way, well, you know, you're going to be stuck in a corner on your own, basically, just with that group. Um, we have to come together. And I think the Maypole and the, May, the Maypole dance is a wonderful celebration of diversity, of the different rays that we all hold. And what are the different rays? The different rays is just to do with frequency. It's to do with vibration. It's to do with heritage. It's to do with soul family. Um, it's to do with often where we've um, where we've been. You know, we've we've been on the blue ray path. We've been on the golden ray path. It, you know, but ultimately, all of the paths need to all of the paths need to merge. And that's from that crystal. That was the message from this crystal today. Thank you. Anything else you want to say to the people watching? You are all star seeds, is what I'm hearing. Again, there is this thing in our community at the moment, which is like, how do you know if you're a star seed? <laughs> We're all star seeds. We're all star seeds. Okay. You've all got the seed within you. Um, we are all from the star system. We have all lived on a multitude of different planets. We have all had experiences in most of these major um, ancient civilizations. It is seeded within us. It's just... It's interesting within some obviously the seed is more fruitful okay so i'm particularly being shown maybe some a, a, a younger crop okay a younger crop um this might be linked into age it might not be but people who you can very easily identify as star seed for example but um i'm also being shown there are some seeds that some people have within them everybody has a seed it, very much like everybody has the divine within them but some seeds within some people have become a little bit contaminated and need to be brought back to life. You know, they need to be, I don't know, put back out in the sun or watered or it's like they're being contaminated. So there's a cleansing process that needs to happen for those people. But again, that can happen if they just open up and ask for it. It's just about asking for the help. Okay. Final card. Do you like my peonies? Aren't they beautiful? I bought them yesterday. I need to show you one of them apparently. Okay, which one should we show? This one at the back that's been hiding the whole time. And they were in tight bud yesterday. They were in tight bud. And look, they've really opened up. I was almost a little bit disappointed that they have opened so much because it's like, oh no, you, I wanted you to last the whole week, but maybe they just needed to do it. I don't know. Isn't that gorgeous? So, light codes, nature codes, nature code right here. That's what I had to open so beautifully. What is that saying to you? Go into your heart, switch off your mind. What is that communicating right now to you? It's interesting, I couldn't actually smell the scent of that until I stuck my nose right in the middle of it. There's something there about, you know, you've got to get right into it. <laughs> you've got to get right into the codes. You've got to get right into nature. 
You've got to get in the water. You've got to put your feet on the earth. You've got to get out in that wind. You've got to get out in that rain. It was Ashtar, wasn't it? Last year was talking about um, healing codes coming through the rain. Final card. Thank you. Okay, this, um, the card of healing has come out with the swans. And it says, gentleness of love, realignment and transformation. Gentleness of love, realignment and transformation. And then this card also came out with it, which is Crystal Child. And it says, your natural core. <gasps> your natural core. You are a crystal child. You are a star seed. That's what I was just saying. Oh. Breathe that in. That center. Breathe that in. You are that. You are this. You are a child of the universe. You are a star seed. You are a crystal child. Again, you know, these beautiful kids that we do have in our world now, yes, we call them crystal children. I've got them in my home as well. But equally, they're a reflection of you. We birth them. <laughs> they come from us. Nothing is separate. Back to unity again. Your natural core is pure, innocent. And it's about removing falsehoods and being the seer. God, you know, I mean, I'm not saying you have to go back and rewatch this video again, but it's almost like I probably will go back and rewatch this now because these cards have been, so, there's been such synchronicity with what I've been saying earlier and then the cards are just coming up and confirming it. Um, I was talking about falsehoods, manipulation, language, spell masters, coming back to removing that purity, innocence, being a seer. I talked about seeing. We need to see in a different way earlier on. And we're more able to do that, to be, to be deprogrammed, to, um, to just be sovereign and at peace with what we feel about anything without having to shout from the rooftops to everybody else. When we, are, when we, we sink into this place, which is an inner place where our crystal child is seeded within us, is within all of us. See through the eyes of a child. See through the eyes of a child. And then also, as I say, ending on this one, the two swans, healing. That word gentleness is so needed. This whole colour palette that I've been showing you today um, is linked into these gentle, gentle colours. Mint green, sage green, violet. Sun of Kamara comes in this beautiful pinky, peachy, creamy bottle. And I don't quite know how that's happened, but uh, there's one card on the bottom of this deck and it's got a drop of water. It's got a drop of water that's just appeared on it. Oh, maybe it was from the flower. <clears throat> maybe it was from the flower. Okay. But I, I quite would like to claim that I've just manifested it. But <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe it was the flower. But the thing is, I am the flower. The flower and I are one. Okay, there's a drop of water, but in all seriousness, it's interesting because it's on the card of the Divine Masculine. Let's just wipe away the Divine Masculine's tears is what I want to do. Let's wipe away the Divine Masculine's tears. Oh, wow. Can you read what that says? If we're letting old paradigms collapse, old timelines collapse, you know, manipulation collapse, what it's giving rise to is it's the rise of the true gentle power, true strength, the divine masculine. This is the birth of the new divine masculine energy that is in within all of us, whether we're male or female. But, you know, particularly within men, we're starting to see this. I actually feel I'm being shown, and I don't know their names, I'm being shown some men that are going to be rising to more dominant positions of power soon. Um, power's not even the right word because power has connotations with, 
you know, the old timeline as well. But um, prominence, Metatron saying, is a better word. Uh, men who rise to positions of prominence, who are going to truly embody some very beautiful, gentle strength and truth. Oh, let's just link into their energy for one moment. Let me just link into their energy. And we birthed them is what I'm hearing. We birthed them. The, the, the men and the women of the world birthed these men that are going to be rising and that are going to be more prominent soon. I'm just hearing soon. And again, I'm being shown the energy of the young guy. I can't remember whether I said this earlier on in the video because I tried to record this a couple of times today. There was a young man who jumped into the Thames to save the woman and he, he drowned trying to save her, but he, he did it anyway. And um, I can't remember what his name is. I'll just put his, I'll, put, I'll find his um, picture. But he, when I looked at his, when I looked at his, um, hold on a minute picture I just saw such gentleness yeah here we go look at him god bless him look at him is he not beautiful can you see the gentleness there the strength the courage he gave his life trying to save a stranger that he'd never met and he just did it from the humbleness and the goodness of his heart and I feel overwhelmed with emotion True star seed. Shine on, my friend, shine on. Okay. Rise of the divine masculine. It's time. And then as the divine masculine rises, we have this energy of the two swans who are able to bring in the ultimate expression of love. The world is ready and waiting for that. Okay, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's... Um, I must just show you that. <laughs> They're beautiful cards, aren't they? Joy of life. This is what it's all about. Let's get back to this. Joy of life. Trust, open your hands, share and let go. Um, hope you've enjoyed this reading. As I say, I'll put the affiliate link below to this deck, Lemurian Star Child Oracle. And um, I'm being told to open this book at page 47, so let's just do that. Let's see what it says. Not the whole thing, but... Uh... Okay. Um, it has, has affirmations for all the cards. So this says, I am ready to live and alive with my divine purpose. I am ready to live and alive with my divine purpose. Amen to that. Take care of you. I'll be back very soon. Lots of love. Bye for now. Bye.